Frank Lambert's Journal of American History article, Peddler in Divinity, is an interesting look at the approach George Whitfield used to conduct his ministry. Lambert isn't just metaphorically referring to Whitfield as a peddler, though, to be honest, I think he's underselling the level of Whitfield's commercial aptitude. Early in Whitfield's ministry, he developed and perfected his impassioned yet accessible oratory style and his distinctive rustic meeting in a field format. He found that having a stylistic hook and a solid promotional plan were the keys to getting butts in pews, so to speak. By the time he planned his North American tour, he was well prepared for commercial success as well as ecclesiastical. Lambert spends a good deal of time presenting the advance work Whitfield had done from promotion to development of product and having it prepared. Much like a concert promoter, Whitfield was promoting the tour schedule, sending out advanced materials, sermons, tracts, um, things to prominent clergy in the areas that he planned on visiting. He also sent out articles and self-promoting reports to newspapers to be sure that people in general were primed and ready for his arrival. When he did arrive, he came with literally tons of books and print materials for sale and distribution. He also had developed a resupply plan. One of Whitfield's printing and press partners was Benjamin Franklin. Franklin was a friend as well as his printer and newsagent. Though Franklin wasn't necessarily a believer, he was impressed with Whitfield's skill in business and oratory. Franklin once observed Whitfield in an open-air public speech in Philadelphia. Whitfield had reportedly had a crowds of up to 20 or 30,000 people. Franklin wanted to evaluate this claim and estimate the crowd size and extrapolate the potential size of crowd Whitfield could address at one time. Based on his own estimates, upwards of 30,000 people, possibly as high as 50,000 people, could be addressed by Whitfield in a similar environment. Needless to say, Franklin was very impressed. Whitfield's American tour expanded his following considerably, as well as his market for journals, sermons, tracts, pamphlets, and other publications. When we look at Whitfield and his accomplishments, we normally think about his ecumenical and oratory prowess, or his beliefs and actions towards educating slaves and Indians. Lambert takes a different tack. While he acknowledges Whitfield's accomplishments in the usual areas, he directs us to look at the often overlooked commercial success and business acumen. The article gives us another dimension to add to and consider of this remarkable historical figure, George Whitfield. Thank you.